Hi everyone, this is Mufei. This is Ika. Our project is improving reinforcement learning with continuous actions, and we are supervised by Professor Jin Zhang. With AlphaGo defeating mankind in Go last year, and a great amount of progress happening, the deep learning research community has been unpredictably prosperous today. Among them, deep reinforcement learning, DRL for short, a combination of deep learning and reinforcement learning, is a representative. To give a brief introduction to RL, we start with this diagram. RL is a machine learning paradigm that is able to formulate and approach many goal-directed problems. A typical RL problem involves a modeling of the environment and a modeling of the agent. At each time step, the agent takes an action at at state st. The environment then emits a corresponding next state st plus one and a scalar reward rt plus one. The agent learns to select appropriate actions by interacting with the environment and aims at maximizing the accumulated reward it receives. It is also quite often to involve a policy which tells the agent which action to take at a given state or time. Consider the example of grid world, where the whole grid is the overall environment, and the cells of the grid correspond to the states of the environment. At most cells, the agent can take four actions: go north, go south, go east, and go west. The reward is said to be minus one if the agent's action results in no changes, plus ten if the agent reaches special state A prime from A, and plus five if the agent reaches special state B prime from B, and zero otherwise. An action space is defined to be a collection of all possible actions. And it can be either discrete or continuous. A discrete action space contains a finite number of actions. For example, a toy problem might have a discrete action space containing only two actions, which allow the modeled agent to go either left one step or go right one step at each time step. In the previous grid world example, we suppose that the agent's possible action space contains four actions, which is obviously discrete. However, in our project, we consider continuous action space. A continuous action space is real-valued, and it can even be of multi-dimensionality. Besides, for most tasks we are dealing with, we are considering a continuous, potentially high-dimensional state space, while we were considering a discrete state space in the grid world example. Many complex problems require continuous action spaces. For example. Multi-joint dynamics with contact, Mujilko for short, is a class of physics simulation problems where we simulate the movement of robots continuously. Thus, improving the robustness of RL implementations in these environments could lead to improvements in crucial applications such as robot control. After getting familiar with some existing working DRL algorithms like DeepQ Network. DQN for short and double DQN, we get an implementation of the normalized advantage function algorithm, NAF for short, with the help of Sean Wellex, a PhD student under the supervision of Professor Zhang. Before we move on to NAF, we need to introduce two additional concepts, respectively state action value and state value. They are basically the corresponding expected cumulative returns, and represent how good it is for the agent to take action A at state S, and how good it is for the agent to be in the state S. Now let's take a look at the NAF algorithm. There are two main ideas involved. First, we decompose the state action value of taking action A at state S into the state value at state S. And the advantage of taking action A at state S. A related prior work is dealing network architectures for deep reinforcement learning by Wang et al. Second, we restrict the advantage of taking action A at state S to be of quadratic form, so that we can get an analytical optimal solution. Let's turn to the pseudocode now. 
we initialize two deep Q networks. One is our current Q network, and another is the target network. The current network will learn to mimic the target network. Initially, they are the same. A play buffer is used as in the traditional DQN algorithm. In DQN and NAV, we do not learn from the latest experiences, but learn from experiences sampled from the replay buffer. For each episode, we initialize a random process from which we will sample noise for the action to increase the stochasticity. At each time step, we select an action which optimally maximizes the advantage at the current state and add noise to it. After taking an action, we collect the reward and the next state from the environment. We store a tuple of original state, action taken, reward received, and next state in the replay buffer. At each time step, we update the current network for i times. Each time, we sample some experiences from the replay buffer, use one-step bootstrapping to get a TD target, and update the current network and the target network. Here is a video of running NAV algorithm on the Pendulum environment from OpenAI, an environment with a continuous action space. The inverted pendulum swing up problem is a classic problem in the control literature. In this version of the problem, the pendulum starts in a random position, and the goal is to swing it up so it stays upright. A valid action is an arbitrary degree to rotate the pendulum about a fixed point. Being two important issues in many other deep reinforcement learning algorithms as well, we are struggling with the instability or divergence issue and the lower sample efficiency issue. The instability or divergence issue is that the learning curve or curve of the performance metric fluctuates a lot during the training process and does not converge to a single point in the end. Take the application of DQN and double DQN to the particle task, for example. The blue line plots the cumulated return in each episode, while the orange line plots the cumulated return averaged over the latest 100 episodes. One can see that the learning curve fluctuates much more seriously, comparing to what happens in the double DQN case. So we are not including all the details here. But the general idea for Q-learning and its deep learning variant deep Q network is that we learn to fit a state action value function. At each state, we take a look at all possible actions and see which action leads to the maximum state action value. And then we select that corresponding action. So for the double DQ variant, we have two deep Q networks. One is used for selecting action, while the other is used for evaluating how good it is to take that action in the corresponding state. We switch the two deep Q networks from time to time. For the average DQN variant, it simply averages on the latest K update parameters in DQN to get the final DQN so that it can also reduce the variation. However, the current attempts like double DQ and average DQ can only reduce the instability issue, but are still unable to solve them completely. The low sample efficiency issue concerns with the fact that it requires the algorithm to see a lot of samples before it learns to work. One related work is prioritized experience replay from Sean at L. These issues also exist in the NAV algorithm. The instability issue is that the NAV algorithm's learning curve also fluctuates a lot and often does not converge to a single fixed point, while the lower sample efficiency issue is that it takes a lot of time for the algorithm to see enough samples before it learns to work. So, both of them are open problems that might be our next focus. 
So now let's empirically see how the instability and loss sample efficiency occurs in the NAF algorithm. We still use pendulum environment in this experiment. We set the training process as 1000 episodes. We expected to get a high and stable accumulated return at the end of the training process. Now let's see what kind of results each episode achieved. However, as we can see, after training enough algorithm for more than 900 episodes, the accumulated return from each following episode still fluctuates a lot, and there is no sign for convergence. Therefore, we can speculate that either the algorithm itself is not very stable, or the sample efficiency of the algorithm is very low that it needs a large number of samples to learn to work. Zhang Wellex and Professor Zhen Zhang spent a lot of time moderating inspiring discussion with us about many papers, code examples, and our project. We really appreciate their help, and it will be impossible for us to conduct the project ourselves. Thanks for your watching.